everybody, Ryan Lutz here with Techno RC. Today I'd like to show you how to build your shocks properly for your Techno vehicles. Alright, it's shock building time. Start off with the shock body, then I take the Protec Premier Blue O-ring grease, and I start to coat the inside of the shock cartridge area. Just give a nice coating all around the inside of there. Next, you're going to want to use the either the plastic inserts that come with the kit. Now, if you use these, make sure that when you take them off, they're going to have a little bit of flashing on them. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you trim that flashing because otherwise it's not going to allow your shock to work smoothly and you're going to be upset by the performance. So make sure you trim that and make sure the whole way around your shock is completely smooth. All right, but an option part instead of using these is a Delrin option that Techno offers. So I like to use these. These will have less friction, smoother reacting shock. So you start off with the small hat washer first. Put that in there. And then next step is an O-ring. A little bit of coat the O-ring fully with the grease. And then you use the flat washer. One more O-ring. coated well and then last use the large hat washer on top now make sure you have the o-ring here that goes over the shock cartridge area this will make sure the shock cartridge nut seats properly another thing for safekeeping I do is the tiny dab of Loctite onto these threads I'll even wipe off any excess you don't want too much because you'll never be able to get it off but just a tiny little bit right there and you start to thread on the shock cartridge nut, but don't tighten it all the way yet. So get it right to there. So next step is to put the piston onto the shock shaft. A couple options here. You have the, the stock silver shock shafts, or an option part is the tie nitride coated shock shafts. These, again, will have less friction, be a little bit smoother reacting shock. And then piston wise, you can use the pistons that come on the tree. Again, you're going to have flashing. Make sure to trim that if you choose to use those. Otherwise, the kits often come with a Delrin piston. These are 4 by 1.8. So I take the shock shaft, put the piston on. Generally, I've been putting the piston, the taper side, towards the shock shaft. And then put the nut on here. Take the Techno shock tool on the four millimeter slot. Start to tighten this down. Do not over tighten this. So tighten it to where it starts to snug. The piston should not move and that's where you want it to be. If you keep tightening it, you'll distort the piston. You risk cracking the piston or it just expanding and not being a smooth reacting shock. So next I take and put some of that O-ring grease on the threads of the shock shaft because that's what's gonna go through the cartridge here. And I don't want to risk tearing the o-rings at all so that's also why we did not tighten the cartridge yet so there's not tension on the o-rings at this point so now that we have the shock shaft through we can tighten up the cartridge again the techno shock pliers can do this tighten it up really good make sure the action's nice and smooth spin it should feel nothing rough should be smooth like butter all right, so now that you're at that point, I like to put on the shock boot and the rod end. Okay, and then the rod ends, you always wanna make sure that all four of your shocks, well, at least the fronts and then the rears are the same as each other. You don't wanna have two different length shocks and this is one of the components that can alter the length of your shock. So we recommend tightening this all the way. And just to make sure, if you're not sure if you've over tightened it or not, once you have the, the ball seated in here, it should move around pretty smoothly. If you feel it binding after you've tightened it, you can back it off it's just a fraction and it should be smooth. As long as that is smooth, but you've tightened it all the way and it felt tight, then you know you've got them all the same, and you can mimic that every single time. So now that you have that, I like to fill the shock. 
Uh, this is a front, so we've been using 375 CST PTRC racing oil primarily. So this, for most conditions, we've been using this. <clears throat> so what I like to do, I hold the shock at a bit of an angle. I push the shaft up about halfway to start, and I start to fill it with oil down the side of the body. And as I start to fill it, I start pulling the shaft down and bleeding out some bubbles that were underneath the piston until I fill it up. Once it's full, the shaft's all, all the way down, and then I, and I will push the shaft all the way up slowly and pull it back down slowly, watching to get any air bubbles that are in there up out of the top, and then I'll let it sit there and rest until all the air bubbles are gone. You don't want air in your shocks the best you can, unless you build emulsion style, but we're not doing that today. So next step is to Get the cap ready. So I have the bladder, put that into the cap, and then I hold the bleeder hole because I'm going to put some of that same oil that we put into the shock into the cap to cover the entire bladder. So the bladder is covered with oil. The air bubbles have bled out of the shock here. So I push the shaft up about halfway. Put the cap on, start to tighten it about two or three turns. <clears throat> now I'll hold the shock at about a 45 degree angle, the bleeder hole at the top here, and I will slowly tighten it. And as I tighten it, as long as you have enough oil in the shock, before you get to how far it tightens, oil will start coming out. So it's tightening it slowly until I get to about one or two threads left or I just start to feel it just start to tighten up. At that point I back it off a little bit and then for a front shock on the 8 scale cars I push it up all but about 10% or you could say about a quarter inch. And then as I'm holding it in that position Finish tightening the shock all the way up. Continually wiping all the oil because I'm a neat freak. And once it's fully tight, I make sure it's fully tight by using the techno pliers you can use on the shock body here. And then the techno wheel wrench has a nice slot on the top for the cap. Crank it tight, make sure it's fully tight. And then I will push the shaft up all the way down and then work it a little bit. Make sure that the bladder stayed seated and the oil's coming out the bleeder hole all. So that looks good. You can even do a couple hard pounding tests just to make sure the oil's coming out the bleeder hole, that it's built good. And then you can check your rebound. So this one's about, you know, 50, 70 percent, depending how long you let it go. And that's about right. That's about how we build all the shocks here. Um, a reason that we don't really build them dead is we really can't per se because these shocks are very large they're probably the largest shocks of any of the eight scale vehicles so there's a lot of displacement and the bladders just simply aren't deep enough to absorb all that displacement that we have when the shaft goes all the way up so if you were to push the shaft all the way up it takes up you lose less oil so you have more air and thus once you pull it all the way down that bladder's got to compensate for that and if it can't, it'll suck the bladder into the body and then your shock's no longer working properly. So we generally, on the front shocks, leave about a quarter inch and we tighten it all the way up. <clears throat> on a rear shock, which is even bigger, we'll leave about three eighths of an inch when we tighten it all the way up. And then on the very front shocks for the short Porsche truck and the super light buggy, they're shorter, those you can press all the way up. Now you can play with it and try to get less rebound if you really want to. Just note that you're going to be contending with the displacement in there and keeping the bladder intact. Uh, another thing to watch out for is what we call hydro locking. Now if say you didn't bleed enough oil out of the shock and you start to push the shock shaft up about say halfway or three quarters or in general you just couldn't even push the shaft all the way into the body and it starts to have resistance and it's fighting against you. It's called hydro locking. There's either too much oil or too much air in your shock. You need to take it apart and rebuild it. 
Uh, this can also happen when you travel, so watch out for that. If you go from like a really warm or really cold climate to a really warm climate, if you fly in an airplane or whatnot, you can go to the track and your car feels terrible on the track and you're like, what's going on? You take a shock off and you can actually, it'll be hydrolocked. It's, it build up air in it, but the pressure changes or whatnot, so that's something else to watch out for. And then as far as finishing off here, I like to put the shock collar on. I already have the O-ring in here. I use the O-ring grease that I used on the O-rings inside the cartridge. I put this on here. This will help it slide up and down the shock body a lot easier now and in the future when you're doing setup adjustments. Now here, make sure you do not cross thread. So if you start to feel any resistance, start to back it off and try again. Make sure you press up. It should go on pretty smoothly once you get it going. And putting that grease on there will help it be smoother yet. So now that that is on, you could finish putting on your spring and your cap. And there's a spot here for a, a set screw to hold your shock retainer spring on. That way you never lose those anymore. And then another little tip that we like to do is so we remember what's in our shocks as we write on the, on the shock cap. So we have four hole by 0 0.8, it's 1.8, so we just, know, we just know it as 0.8. And then I put the oil of 375. So there you go, four hole by 0 0.8 piston, 375 oil. That way in the future, I know what's in there if I ever forget, if I didn't write it down or whatnot. And that is how I build my Techno Shocks. Thanks for watching.